So do I have to act normal? We're recording. Whatever. Um, you can act whatever you want. Doesn't care. But yo, so, yeah, we hear you well. So basically, guys, this video is we're gonna teach how to build your own strategy and what you should be thinking when you come to the markets. So, all right, Connor. So what's your like when you go to the markets? What's your biggest issue that you, you think you have or common issue that you have? Uh, definitely my risk management. Risk management, okay. I was doing good, and then I hit that one banger trade. And yeah. And you started over leveraging, right? Yeah, and then I lost like eight hundred in the past two weeks. Yeah. So that's that. That's if you notice in my trades, I always try to keep it the same risk, always. Yeah. Every time, no matter what, if it's an A plus trade, I don't full pour. I just like keep my same risk every trade. Doesn't matter if it's W or L. I always keep the same risk. But, so, what I want to go over with you today is, so, I, recently, you've been doing options hella, right? So, you've been doing a lot of stock trading, and I want to go over what I was talking about with your friend Aiden, how, like, when you approach, when you go to a market, what you should analyze, what you should mark out, what you should be looking at, and risk management is key, so, try to, every single trade, risk the same amount, like, no matter what, if you think it's A+, plus or it's, like, a B setup, always try to keep the same risks, because, like, for example, let's say A plus trade, you win like, sorry, A plus trade, you like full port, not full port, my bad. If you like a B minus trade, you full port, but there's an A plus trade, you win, right? And you win, you, you even though you hit the trade, you won't win as much because you lost so much on the full port trade, right? So that's why no matter what scenario it is, always try to keep the same risk. Um, so let me just go to like a random uh, one today. Okay, this one's good. So look at NVIDIA, right? I, I know you've been trading a lot of NVIDIA. So what sh should you be coming to the market? So when you go to the market, whatever you're trading, stock, options, futures, always start from the higher time frames. Just look at the higher time frame and be like, okay, what the fuck is going on? So I'm going to daily right now. So what is going on here, Connor? What's happening here? All right. So we had a big rise. We had a big rush for yeah. months. Okay. Yep. Now we hit an all-time high and we're just building liquidity to either move down or push a little up. We're at like a resistance level. Exactly. So, let's just right now. What I usually do is when I get when I get started with the week, I mark out the highs and lows. So, let me just mark out. So, like this is the all time high. So this is super high confluence zone. This area is super strong because it's all time highs. Uh, let's mark out uh daily high, daily low, and just like like that. Just like key levels. Just like. Key highs and lows, like not lows that's like next to each other, but like key significant highs and lows. Yeah, equal lows, equal highs is good, but just in a daily time frame, mark out key levels. So yeah, the video is a huge uptrend, but the last week or so, we kind of stopped the movement. We took out all time highs. Now we got some more heavy bearish candles. So maybe we might start pumping to the downside. So now let me go to four hour. Let's check the four hour. Okay, so we got another high in the four hour right here. Okay, cool. Also, Connor, what did I notice here? We have a four-hour fair value gap. Is it being respected or disrespected? This four respected. respected. Because notice how even though we did wick on the four-hour past it, we dumped super hard to the downside. So this four-hour fair value gap is super, super important. So I'm gonna mark this one out because it already got respected. I know it's a strong area. Uh what else? Also, what you gotta know is you always want to mark out like the pre-market highs and lows. So before before we do that, let's just mark out some of the buy zones because we marked out some of the sell zones. Like this four-hour fair value gap is a strong sell zone. Uh, what about some buy zones? So right here, Connor, I see that we have a order block four-hour. This candle is an order block, and I'll explain why. Because let me mark this blue, not blue, so green, and let's put this as four-hour. OB order block. The reason why this is an order block is because we took out the slow, right? We took out the slow and we had huge displacement to the upside. Huge push to the upside. So the previous candle, the previous candle is usually the order block. The reason why I did not mark this one, but this one is because this is the first candle right after. It always has to be the opposite color. The first candle after we took out the low and had big displacement to the upside. So that's why we had this is the order block and notice how we are respecting this really well. Um, so I marked that. Now let me go in a lower time frame, like in one hour. Okay, one hour. Kind of looking the same, nothing much. 
Okay, well, let's go 30 minute maybe. Let's go 30 minute. Okay, cool. So kind of look the same. So now let's just go to five minute and just go back in time. So let's just go back into day. See what happens. So pretend that this should happen. So what I always do, like for example, let's say you're coming to the options day, right? Mark the highs and lows of the market, okay? Mark the pre pre market level. So pre market level high, pre market level low is right here. And notice how we have a gap. Usually, when we have a gap in, for example, stocks, as a very good target. So this is pre market high, pre market low. And no. Yes, yes. But hold on. Listen to this. Notice how we have hella equal highs right here. Hella equal highs. So when we have equal highs, a lot of them, or hella equal lows, that's a great target. So what we're waiting for is we're waiting for a pre-market high and low to get taken, and then we want to try to go the opposite direction. So let's see how market opened today. So market shot up, topped perfectly to this four-hour fair value gap, okay? Right now, people are like, oh, this candle is looking really strong. Let's enter calls. But usually what happens is the first five minutes of market, it takes it to high and low, and then it wants to go the opposite direction. So let's see what happens. So I entered. I entered like, I was up. You entered today? Yeah. The video calls, when, what time? Like right when market opened. Yeah, so market opened, took out this high, pumped. It looks super bullish, but with still this four hour for value gap, it's not really too clear. That's why I don't take a trade before like an hour into the market, 30 minutes into the market, because I want to wait so high liquidity levels get taken first. And notice how right after we took out this high, we tapped in this four hour for real gap, we stopped the bullish movement, and now we had a first sign of bearishness. We got a first bearish candle. So we took out the highs. Now I'm kind of looking for short setups. So I'm looking for a fair value gap. So okay, we took out this high again. Manipulation. This is perfect. Notice how we took out the high, then we took out this high again. You see that? This is manipulation. When you, when you see a double fake out or a manipulation, then it's a great sign. Great sign that your reversal setup will hit much more. That's why I caught it with my strategy. You see, what, ha what, what what was I saying? I wait for manipulation, then I enter. And it's low key been hitting like every time. So let's see. Boom. Okay, we got displacement candle. Perfect. So right now, what do we have? We are in uptrend. So what do you want to see? We want to see a break of structures. So. Let's mark out the structure shift right now. Let's mark our structure. So right now we're having uptrend, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher low, higher high, higher low. Okay, sorry. Higher low, higher high, higher low. Okay, we want to see a candle break through this low so we can shift, so we can have a change of structure. Boom, there we go. Perfect bearish candle, okay? So now we notice that, okay, this five minute fair value gap is getting ran through. We took up this high, we tapped into four hour fair value gap, and we have a huge move to the downside. So it's clearly telling me that we want to target the lows. Okay. Now let's see. Okay, let me go to one minute. My bad. So one minute for value gap. Oh, shit. Okay, hold on. Um, see, my strategy has been to, like trying to like kind of like Morgan trades, like catch those breakout trades. Those try to catch the breakout trades, but also keep in mind of the reversal. Because look, watch. Morgan trades probably answered this breakout, but then look what happened. We had a reversal, right? And look, okay, perfect example in the one minute. So check this out. I'm gonna, I went back a little bit. So we have the structure, right? We had a higher, higher low, sorry, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, and look what happened. We broke structure, not broke structure, change of structure to the downside. You see that? Yeah. So this right here is kind of telling you that, okay, my opinion for longs is slightly shifting the opposite way. But sometimes what, what happens is always a liquidity sweep. So this might have been like a tickle to slow reversal but if you see these fat candles to the downside through a lower high most likely it wants to continue that direction so let's see okay we tapped this fair value gap so i'm gonna take an entry in this fair value gap because what why put my stop here um let's put my tp in these lows whatever the reason why you would enter it here is because what happened we took out this high we tapped in this four hour fair value gap. We displaced to the downside. Okay. Um, market structure shift. And we had this manipulation right here. So we took out this high over here. Then we took out the high out again. So that's what the A plus setup. Stop loss above here. TP is going to be down here. So let's see how this plays out. And let's just see how this plays out. And we'll hit all the TPs. It like dropped all day. Yeah, exactly. And hit my final TP right there. 
So, what do you want to look for again? High or low to get taken. Okay, well, for wait for pre-market buy side, sell side to get taken. Then try to look for the option direction. Notice how for futures, since it's 24 hours, I wait for a London session. Because the 5 a.m., 2 a.m. area is usually London session for futures. Okay, so that was... Um, and I have a question. Uh, yeah, what's up? Since you always say options are so easy, why, why are you never doing it? It's free bread. I'm telling you, uh, the second I pass my funded, I'm doing a hundred, not not a hundred. Um, yeah, hundred dollar challenge for one k. Cause um, I feel like if I do an options challenge, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be always looking at spy and QQQ, and like cause I, I'm gonna always try to like catch a setup. But cause th here's the thing, when I do the challenge, I need to get everything ready. I need to look at. So Sunday night, or sorry, not Sunday night. Basically, the night before the um, the next day, I need to look at like twenty stocks, whatever has the best setups, and then I always gotta watch out in which one has the setup happening. Cause like, look, I have thirty stocks all like all here, right? I have thirty stocks, and like one of them will have an A plus setup, while most of them will have a shit setup. So I need to always look at um, the charts. I always gotta flip through with it. When I flip through, it's kind of like a headache. That's why I like futures is cause like it's super simple. It's like I have QQQ one side, spy on the other side, and I just look at that, and I also that's all I gotta do. But for options, you, like for example, Morgan trades. The reason why his is kind of easy because he has a help, he has a bunch of monitors, he has a screener that tells him what he needs to do. So that's why I like to do futures too. And plus, with the strategy I trade, um, futures works way better. Because for example, like Morgan trades breakouts, so he he chases for high volume moves, like quick pu pushes like that. For example, like if I would have answered here. We would have consolidated for 30 minutes in options. We probably would have lost a lot of value. So that's why I like futures better personally. But I will do, definitely I'll do, once I pass this funded account, which I'm really close, I'm going to do a $100 challenge. I'm going to try to full port every trade, get to 1K. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, so let me check a couple other stocks that like, okay, Connor, what other stocks do you trade? Give me other stocks you trade. So, uh, right now I'm in a Microsoft long call to the end of the week. Okay, I'm actually off longs. Okay, ooh, this is low key perfect. Ready? Watch this. So, let me go back in time. Uh, and actually, I marked this out for Aiden last time. So, let me. So, pre market, okay, what do you do? You go to higher time frames, you mark out all this shit. Okay, so actually, let me just go over what I marked out from last time. So, over here, we have equal lows, okay? Daily equal lows. This is a key target in the future, okay? So, whenever, let's say, market comes back down, this is a key level in the future. So what happened here? We were consolidating for the last what? Since January. So for the last like three months, guys, Microsoft was consol consolidating. And when there's a consolidation, guys, right? When there's a consolidation, what you want to wait for is a breakout in either direction, and then try to go the opposite way. Because usually what happens is it's called Judas swing. Like for example, when there's a lot of the times when there is a big consolidation happening, like stock is going sideways, right? In this big range. What you wait for is a breakout one direction, and then usually what happens is it dumps the other direction really fast, because it's called Judas swing setup consolidation, breakout traders get fucked, and then it goes the opposite way. So that's what I want to expect from Microsoft. We had a consolidation right here, we broke out to the upside, and notice how the second we broke out, we had a huge move to the downside. But it's too early to tell because if you look in the higher time frame, Microsoft is super bullish, but. We are at all-time highs. We are at peak market. So eventually, guys, we will see a retrace slash dump. Okay, what else did I mark? I marked the daily fair value gap, right? I marked daily fair value gap. So fair value gap, guys, is three consecutive candles. Let me just draw this out for you guys. Um, an empty space. So for you two that uh, doesn't understand, um, brush. So let's say there's three consecutive candles. Like one candle here, whatever. And then we get another candle like right here. Okay, and then let's see, we get another candle like right here. Blah blah. But then this this is a bullish. But then this this space means bullish. So what it is is basically three consecutive candles. One, two, three. Okay, and the empty space right here. So the empty space from the top. Sorry, from the third candle, it's the bottom wick to the first candle top wick. So this empty space right here is fair value gap. And what you notice is. With price is, it taps into the fair value gap, usually respects it, and it goes in the following way. So this is a bullish fair value gap. We want to go for longs here. But for a bearish one, um, let me just draw this here. How do I change it? Yeah, let me change it to red. So let's say this is a bearish fair value gap, right? Okay, pretend it's bearish fair value gap. 
Usually what happens is price comes back to it, taps and respects and goes that way. So usually fair value gap is a good retracement point. That's what I used to do for my entries. Not anymore. I kind of switched it up a little bit. But that's a fair value gap. So three consecutive candles and then the empty space in the middle candle. So that's what I marked here. Three consecutive candles. One, two, three. Okay, this empty space right here between these two candles. The high of the first and the low of the third. That's the fair value gap. Dragged it out. So what do I anticipate? If price comes back down to this daily fair value gap, most likely we'll see a bounce. Okay, so I'll go... Plus at a very big spot right now. What's up? Look in the hour time frame. Like it's at this is a big spot. Yes. So okay. Why? Why is yours down there, mine? Because I, I'm in a bar replay. I went back in time. I'm back in time. Oh. So okay. Mark the highs. Okay. Also, this is a four hour fair valley gap. Okay. Four hour fair valley gap. So in the four hour, I'll mark this bearish fair valley gap and notice how we are respecting it right now. Okay. That's cool. Good to know. So now let's go to 30 minutes. So let's go, let's analyze what's happening in the market. So what you want to look at is a couple things. Kind of, I don't know if you want to write this down or like you can watch back at this YouTube. So a couple things you want to note, guys. Ready? Is one, look at the trend of the market. If it's bullish, bearish, making higher lows, high, higher highs, right? If it's lower lows, lower highs, right? Look at the trend of the market. And then look, number two is look at which fair value gaps is getting respected more than disrespected, okay? So for example, Connor, if I give you a question, ready? So let's say we are in a market, right? Um, we are disrespecting bearish for value gaps, but respecting bullish for value gaps. What type of market are we in? What do you think? Wait, say that again. So if we if we are disrespecting bearish for value gaps and respecting bullish for value gaps, what type of market do you think we're in? Uptrend or downtrend? Well, downtrend, right? No, uptrend. Because if we are disrespecting bearish for value gaps, like watch, like right here, well, this. Oh, you mean like we're going through the bearish? Yes, exactly. Like, look right here. Then we're in an uptrend. Yep. So this fair value gap we broke through. So disrespect the bearish fair value gap, and notice how the bullish one. Like for example, we have a bullish fair value gap right here. We are respecting really well. We tapped into it perfectly, and we shot up. So you gotta notice which fair value gaps get respected, disrespected, and notice which highs just recently got taken, and then which way the market moved. For example, right here, shit. So we have these equal lows right here. We took out this equal lows, okay? We took out these equal lows. Market barely wicked it, took up, took it out, and now we, we displaced it upside. Okay, cool. And also, this green box is the 15-minute order block. I'm just going to 15-minute. So, just saying, it's the previous candle before the huge move to the upside, and it's the opposite color. That's why this is a 15-minute order block right here. We took out this low. Displacement to the upside, 15 minute order block. Notice how we're respecting it really well. Okay, now we're coming to the present day. So let's say Connor wanted to trade this day. Um, shit, okay, one sec. Is this, what day is it? Fuck. Let me go back. So let's see what, what happened here. So right now, let's mark up daily highs and lows. So I'm in the 15 minute time frame. So I'm going to mark up the highs for the day. So we have a key low right here. We have equal highs right here. Ooh, okay. Equal highs, kind of knows. Great target. Yes, you guys will comment in the video. We did barely take out this equal highs. But when 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 you see something that barely takes out equal highs out, uh, actually, no, the price is up here. But like, pretend this was equal highs. My bad. Pretend this is equal highs right here. If we have equal highs and we barely took it out, think about this. There's still going to be liquidity up here because, for example, people that had their stop loss, for example, on, on this high... They don't exactly have it one tick above. They might have a couple of ticks, couple of, like maybe like a hundred ticks above, right? They don't have their stop. A lot of people don't have their stop loss right above the high, so that's what there's still liquidity up here, I think. So okay, what happens? So let's mark our pre-market lows, pre-market highs. Okay, cool, and let's see where market goes. So notice how we are respecting bearish for value gaps. Okay, this bearish for value gap is getting respected. Okay, cool. Um. We had this big, huge downtrend. We dumped really hard. So right now, buys is overall bullish. No, bearish right now because we're in a huge downtrend. So now let's see which price takes out the high or low. So, okay. Pre-market took out this low, okay? And when, the second it takes out the pre-market high or low, you want to see how it reacts. If it's a wick, if it's a huge push through it. Because if it's a wick like this, it's a good sign that price might reverse. So let me go in a lower time frame. What time is this? This is... Oh shit, okay, I need to go a little bit ahead. 
Um, wait for market opened. Okay, market opened. Shit. So notice how right here, guys, we're in this huge downtrend, right? We took out the slow, and notice how the second we took out the slow, we don't have a lot of bearish candles anymore. See that, Connor? So like, we have this huge move to the downside, and the second we take out the slow, the bearish candles just stopped, and then we started creating some bullish candles. You see that? So now my target is bullish because the market open, we got pretty big bullish open. So now I'm going to mark out this fair value gap. Which fair value gaps you want to answer? It's a really good question. Thank you, Connor, for asking. So the fair value gap you want to answer off of is usually the, the one that either displaces through a high or low. Like, for example, we were in a downtrend, Connor. See that? Wait, hold on. So downtrend, boom. So this higher low, lower low, higher low, lower low. Higher, low, lower, low. And notice how right here we broke above this high. So we changed structure. See that? Sure. So when usually price change structure, there's a displacement fair value gap. And the most recent one is right here. So if price comes back down here, I'm going to take a long position. Let's see if it does. Sometimes we don't get filled. That's how trading works. And our TPs would be the pre-market high, for example. Okay. So let's see if it gets tapped into this or it runs away. And let's see. And today it looks like it ran. Yeah, it took it this high, ran away. So sometimes you don't take a trade. But a lot of traders, what they like to do is they trade. They like to trade break of structures. So let's say like market broke this high, they would enter. But the thing I don't like about that is your stop loss gets too big. Like for example, let's say you enter on the break of structure candle, which is this high, your stop loss would be huge and your risk to reward would be stupid, right? You're risking you're risking like a thousand bucks to make two hundred bucks. It's not worth it at all. So some days you don't you don't get a trade like this. But let's see what happens. I just want to see how it happened through the day. I right, so notice how we took out this high, then we took out this high again. So this is a manipulation. Let's see if we can catch a reversal. Or it's gonna be another trending day. Let's see. Okay, so we're getting some bearish structure shift. Because look right here, guys. Notice you got always gotta look at the structure shifting. So we're in uptrend, higher low. Blah, blah, blah. And right here, we broke structure right here. So let's see, maybe in a five minute higher time, we can enter on a fair value gap. Maybe on a 15. Um, let's see, maybe 10 minute. No, let's check, let's check 15. Let's see in a 15 minute if we can enter off a fair value gap. Okay, ooh, 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 tap in this fair value gap right here. So this fair, this tiny little 15 minute fair value gap got tapped. Okay, cool. So, super tiny one right here, guys. You always got to keep an eye out on these high time frame for rally gaps. So, tapped into it right here, guys. Now, we want to enter short. So, let's say, okay, let's pretend that we, we enter right there. Pretend we enter right here, guys. And let's see if this trade plays out. So, we got a manipulation move. We took out the high. Big structure shift to the downside. Okay, cool. Now, let's see if market dumps down here to the next sell side. Let's see if we get trade plays out or not. I'm just going higher time frame so this plays out faster so let's see so this is where we at right now okay so right now basically our break even but basically maybe if you answer up this fair value gap tp1 would have been down here or two you probably would have trimmed but you always got to look at the highs and lows get taken wait for a structure shift wait for a fair value gap and then enter off of that um let's look for another one right here guys let's check um can i get rid of this okay what about google google took out a high Ooh, it did. Okay, this might be a good one. So what do I do on Google? Let's say, let's say I'm trading Google right here, guys. So Google, what do you want to do? Go on a daily time frame. Mark the highs. Mark key highs. Okay, notice how right here, guys, we took out this high right here. So I'm going to mark this one out, too, because we took out this huge high. Uh, let's mark out some lows. So, Connor, which lows would you mark out here? If you're if, if you trading Google. Trading Google? Hmm. What highs and lows would you mark out here? What do you think? Shit, honestly, I, I don't really know. The all-time high. Yeah, so all-time highs you marked out. Good. I marked out this high because we just took it out today. But what other high would you... What other? Sorry, what other lows would you mark out? Because we took out these two highs. So what lows would you mark out here for, like, a target? You a little bit, like, have two equal lows, but not really. A little, the one up. Yeah. Cause like look right right here look we have this significant low. Usually when you want to market on a high time frame, mark out key significant highs and lows. Like for example, if we're in an uptrend, 
the lows you want to mark out um where's the arrow so let's say we're in an uptrend market this is pretend this is a daily time frame connor so what you want to mark out is the lows right mark, mark out the lows okay of, on the uptrend and what usually what you want to see is on the uptrend is if you could take out one of these lows take out one of these lows like wake it past a tiny bit and then go to the upside that's what you want to see also same thing for a downtrend as well guys Downtrend, you want to mark out the highs. So downtrend, we have a slight downtrend right here, guys. So downtrend, boom, 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 boom. What you want to do? Simple, mark out the highs, right? Mark out the highs, mark out the highs, and mark out the highs. And what are you waiting for? You're waiting for the highs to come up. Either take them and then go the opposite direction. Okay. So now let's go back in a lower time frame in Google. So what do we see here? We're in a, we are in a downtrend right here on a daily time frame. So, boom. Downtrend, we're making lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. And then we try to take out this high, but we wicked it, okay? So if it if you have a huge wick, if you have a huge wick on a high time frame, it's kind of telling you that most likely this could be a liquidity sweep. Okay, so we took out this high, this placement. Um, actually, wait, hold on, let me just go back pre-market. So, yeah. And what time is this one? This is 8 a.m., this is 8.30, 9, 9.30. Okay, market open here. Cool. So now we go to the uh, lower time frame. Let's mark the highs and low free market. So this was pretty much the high. This is pretty much the low. So we took out the high in pre-market. Okay, cool. Now what do I want to wait for? I want to wait for a, a fake out to the opposite direction. So let's check here, guys. Um, we took out this high. Now wh what happened here again? This is a beautiful example, Connor, right here. Beautiful example. We took out this high. Okay, we have a fair value gap, but do not enter here because why? We want to wait for manipulation. So look, we took out this high, and then we took out this high again. You see that? Sorry. Then we dumped. So what you would do is you pretend like you enter off this fair value gap over here. So you wait for a displacement candle or a structure shift. Take this fair value gap. Boom, boom. Tap in this fair value gap, and let's see how price acts. And it goes to the downside. Maybe your TP1 was there. Stop break even. Okay, I want to go back to the video, but I want to see if we can go back in the other time frame, like in the previous days. Check out uh, Arm Holding. Arm? Yeah. Arm. Alright, cool. Check Arm. Never seen this stock before in my life, but let's check it out. So, what do I do, Connor? What's the first thing you want to do uh, when you are looking to trade a stock? First thing. Daily bias or weekly bias. Whatever yeah, exactly. So. What do I want to do first? So what trend direction are we in? Okay, so we were consolidating for last year. We had a huge pump to the upside, but it looks like for the last, like what? A couple months, like last two months, month and a half, we've been consolidating this range, okay? So what do I want to do? Look at which fair value is getting disrespected and respected. So it looks like we've been respecting this big daily fair value gap right here, guys. Pretty well. So this daily for value gap is pretty strong. So I'm gonna mark, mark this out. Daily FDG. Okay, cool. Mark that out. Uh, let's mark out some highs and lows. So let's mark out, like for example, this low right here. Let's mark out uh, this high. Let's mark out this low. Okay, cool. That's that's pretty good for now. So let's see if we can go in, in a four hour smaller time frame. Okay, so what do we see from now? Um, hmm, interesting. Do we have any bullish for value gaps? Looks like we're not. We don't have any bullish for value gaps. Notice how all the bullish for value gaps are getting disrespected. Like for example, this fair value gap. What happened to this fair value gap, Connor? This one right here. What happened to this guy? Just broke through it. Broke through it. What about the one um, be uh, below it? This fair value gap. What happened here? Broke through. Broke through it. it. Kind of went back up a little bit. True, but notice how it took out this low. You see how it took out this low? And yeah. so people would have got stopped out, so I don't think that matters. If you see, ready? How do you know if a fair value gap gets disrespected or respected? Is if you see a big candle close like through it. Okay, what about, for example, this fair value gap right here? We had this one right here. Respected or disrespected? I mean, it wicked pretty hard. Yes, yeah, so people got stopped out on the slow. You see that? So no, even though we wicked it, we got stopped out hard. So now we know that, okay, bearish fair value gaps are getting respected, bullish ones are getting disrespected. Okay, so we have a bearish bias overall. Okay, so now let's go in a lower time frame. Let's go in like in a one hour. Okay, so now let's mark out the pre-market. Okay, let me just take this out. 
Okay, so just mark out yesterday's highs and lows. So we have a high right here. Okay, cool. Let's mark that out. And let's notice what price is doing. So we were in a low time frame. We were in an uptrend. So you see that in a low time frame, we were in an uptrend. So boom, 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 boom. Okay, little wick right here. So we're kind of in an uptrend right now. Direction is bullish. Okay, but in a high time frame, we are bearish. So you're kind of confused. Okay, what do I do? So when you are in the short term, going the opposite of the daily bias, for example, the daily bias is bearish, right now this small time frame direction is bullish, you still want to try to find short setups, even though this tiny time frame market is bullish. So let's check it out. So uh, we have this little fair value gap here on the one hour. So let's just mark it out just in case if we tap into it. This little one minute, um, not one minute, one hour fair value gap. Let's mark this guy out. Okay, cool. And also notice that this fair value gap went a one hour got respected really well. So actually I'm going to mark this one out first because we're closer to this one. This fair value gap we respected really strong. We tapped it. We wicked a little bit above for strong rejection. Okay, so let me mark out pre-market highs. Boom. Pre-market lows down here. Uh, now let's go to a uh, 30 minute time frame. Let's go lower time frame. All right, so one, one two. Okay, so yeah, 9.30 opened up. Oh, shit, I kind of gave it away. Oh, fuck. Um, let me go back a little bit. I didn't just see anything. Now let me go to 15 minutes, see what's going on here, guys. Okay, 15. What's happening? Nothing really much. We, we disrespected this fair value gap. Okay, cool. I right, 10 minute. 10 minute, nothing much. 5 minute. Okay, nothing much. Okay, let's go back into 1 minute. So let's see how market open, guys. So right now, what is our strategy? We're going to wait for the high or low of pre-market to get taken. If you're trading futures guys wait for london session so let's see how market opened uh when well, no. okay here we go let's see how market opened guys okay ooh, 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 there you go there you go notice how look connor we swept mar uh market lows and now the second we swept it we got a fat wick and we got a fat displacement to the upside so what is that telling you right now with this move to the upside what is it telling you with this candle right here what yeah. Breakout it could be a breakout, but also it could be taking out the high and going lower. I agree, but where does okay with this with us taking out the slow fast well, and this is one minute though. This is one. Minute. This is one minute. I agree, but just this is kind of you can take this to account on all time frames. But let's check this out. We took a pre market low. We had a fast display to the upside. So it's telling us that where does price want to go? up right now so we want to look for longs right now so let's see if we can catch a one minute for value gap entry okay we got this place with the upside so we got a one minute for value gap let's see if you get tapped into sometimes you don't get tapped so then you, that's pretty much a no trade day okay longs stop loss below low tp's over here okay let's just see how this plays out if you get tapped into or not okay i didn't take it the high yet hold on did not take it the high Oh shit. Okay, fuck. Okay, we got tapped into. Pretend we got tapped into. Let's see if the trade still plays out, even though we did not take it the high. Let's see if the trade still plays out if we did not take it the high. Okay, let's see if it gets stopped out. This fair value gap. Let me drag this out. And let's see if patient, if being patient was worth it, this trade. And let's see if we want to, Oh, there you go. Nice. So now we took it the high. See, this is a perfect example of guys why you want to be super patient. Because notice right here, look, we had a fair value gap right here. We had a fair value gap. Okay, cool. And it ran away from us and it almost took at the highs that we wanted to target right here. We almost took at the highs. But we were patient. We waited for a fair value gap to get tapped into. We entered long and now we took a, beautifully took out this high right here. See that? So this would have been a beautiful, beautiful long setup. Okay, uh, let me see other examples. Connor, is there any other stocks you want to go over or... Yeah, but I, I, I'm I very interested in ARM because it's an AI stuff. Yeah. So honestly, like, I kind of want to, like, buy shares or, like, very long term. Long term. Okay. So if you want to look at shares, if you want to look at long term investments, so let's just look in the higher time frame then. So, okay, we're in a bearish fair value gap. Okay. We had we already had this huge pump to the upside. And for the last couple months, we've been low-key decreasing to the downside. So what you want to see is if you want to buy shares, you got to wait for either... A, a day of huge displacement, like a breakout day. For example, I'm going to talk about this, and you probably will recognize from Morgan Trades. So, what Morgan Trades does is after a huge push, 
he waits for a consolidation, then he waits for a breakout day. So a candle close above like a trend line, for example. So what you want to see is either maybe in a couple of days, if you ever get a huge bullish close above these highs, then maybe potentially look at the next day for entering weekly or monthly long-term calls. Because right now we are not in any place to enter high time frame or long, what's it called? Long time frame investment because markets overall looking bearish right now. We took out these highs, super consolidation, not nothing really much is going on. So I would wait for a huge, huge move to the upside. Okay, let's just, uh, yeah. Another stock is Tesla. Tesla, okay, love Tesla. All right, let's check out Tesla. So I do have like 13 shares of Tesla. So. All right, so Connor, let's check. So if you open up fresh day, so brand new market day, what do you first thing you do? First thing you do, what do you do? Uh, we'll check out the bias. Check out the bias. Check out the bias. Okay, so let's check. What direction is the market going? Down, oh. up, down, up. But, really nowhere. but overall, like from this huge... It's been going down. For yeah. yeah. Two years. So the past two years, we've been going down pretty heavily. Okay, so long-term bias is bearish. Okay, so... What do we do now is we mark out daily highs and lows. So I noticed that we have this low over here. We have these equal lows, kind of relative equal lows, because price is almost at these equal lows, but not there yet. And this is a potential good bearish target. Let me just mark out the next significant high, which is up here. Okay, now let's just mark out internal. This is still daily time frame. Tesla's huge. So let me just mark out internal daily time frame. So I'm gonna mark out this. I'm gonna mark out this high. Okay, cool. Now let's look at fair value gap. So we have this huge daily fair value gap right here. I'm gonna mark this guy out. Why not? Drag it out. Okay, daily FEG fair value gap. Okay, cool. Now it's going to lower time frame. So let's go to four hour. Okay. Now let's check out what's going on here. So price took out this low. Notice how price took out this low right now. Okay, we did nothing for the last couple like, couple hours or couple days. Then price consolidated, now we had a huge breakout day. So looking like price is potentially might be bullish on the short term time frame because we took it this low, we had consolidation, now we want to push up to the upside. But don't forget that overall we're still bearish, so we gotta be careful if you want to take a long setup. So what am I looking at? So oh I found another four hour for value gap. So potentially if price comes up to here, we might see a sell-off. So that's why I want to mark a four hour fair value gap. Okay, do you have any other fair value? We have a bullish one right here, but this happened today. Um, let's just go to one hour. Let's check one hour. Ooh, okay. This is a good one right here. One hour fair value gap is getting respected. Okay. One hour fair value gap getting respected. So I'll mark that. Well, actually, wait. Shit, fuck. Let me just go here. Um, let me just do that. Okay, like that. Perfect. Um, yeah, so four hour fair value gaps up here. Actually, we did tap in this one hour. So this is still a one hour time frame fair value gap. Okay. And so we have equal lows down here. Okay, cool. We have these highs up here. So now we want to go to lower time frame and see um, which fair value gets respected, disrespected, and the highs and lows. So let's mark out this pre market high right here, this pre market low. Okay, perfect. And let's just see what happens here. Uh, and what time is this? This is 7 30. So 1, okay, to 8 30, 9. Okay, this is 9 a.m. So basically what happened is we could, this is not pre-market high. This is pre-market high. Boom. Now let's go lower time frame, 15 minute. This is 9.15. Okay. Let's just wait till market opens. So let's see. So this market pre-market high, pre-market low. Let's see what happens here, guys. Okay, so market dumps. Okay. Pre-market dumps. Let's see what happens. So we're looking like we're taking out these lows. Okay. We're taking out these lows. We'll see if we can take out these pre-market lows. It doesn't always have to be the pre-market lows because look, for example, this pre-market low is so down here. Because look, we have these internal lows right here. We have this internal low, fuck, right here. Like this inter this internal low, okay, cool. We have this internal low, cool. And right now, price is moving hard down to the downside. So every time we take out this low, we have a huge move to the ups uh, downside. So we're, now we're waiting for either a reversal, like a break of structure, a fair value gap, displacement, a lot of things. So let's see if price keeps going to the downside. All right, let's see if we take out these lows. It right, looks like there's not price does not want to take out these lows. Okay, interesting. 
Because sometimes if we come close, take on these lows, but then we have a market structure shift already, then it most likely these lows were the target. But let's see if we get a market structure shift to the upside. Like a displacement move. Okay. We got a fair value gap. Okay, hold on. So we got a fair value gap. Let me just test out longs here. See if they hit right now. So we have a big fair value gap. This is probably the biggest candle we had in like a long time. And this today's move. Enter long, stop loss. Let's say just below the slow. Take profit would be pre-market highs. So let's see if this trade plays out. So let's see if this plays out. Buy. And let's see how it goes. If we get stopped out. And oh, we hit GP. Nice. Perfect. So like this is another great example. So we did not have to wait for pre-market lows to get taken because this is a huge, this would have been a huge move to the downside right now. This would be a huge move. So what did we wait for? We waited for a one of the internal lows to get taken. See that? We had see that Connor? We waited for one of the internal lows to get taken. Okay, then we wait for a structure shift. So for example, right here. So let's mark out the structure. So we had a downtrend. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Okay, oh. Hold on. There we go. So now we had a market structure shift. It's kind of a small one. This is the one minute. Oh, shit. Okay. So we had a market structure shift. So that's why I took the entry of this for value gap. And notice how this was probably the biggest candle. This this bullish candle was probably the biggest bullish candle we had since what time was that? 9.45. So over like, okay, like 30 minutes, right? We had this place to the upside. We entered long. Your stop loss could have been lows here, lows here, lows here. It doesn't really matter. And we always want to target the next draw on liquidity, which is the pre-market highs. So that would have been a nice trade. All right, let's go over a couple more. Um, okay, what about Apple? Connor, do you trade Apple at all? Yeah, I trade Apple sometimes. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let's check. Let's just go over back here. All right, check it. Looking, it's pretty high up, but looking like it's coming down. Yeah. Maybe go back up. Maybe so. Right now, let's check daily time frame. New chart. Check out daily time frame. Trend bias. So it's looking overall like high time frame, looking like it's pretty bullish. But we are consolidating in this range. We took out this high of up here. We have big displacement to the downside. So overall, last possible like six months, we're looking pretty bearish. But right here, I marked out this daily order block right here. So that's why we're respecting here. Okay. Um. Should okay now I'm gonna lower time frame. Or actually let me just mark up the highs and lows. We have equal highs, okay. Good target. Equal highs. Okay, great target, guys. Equal lows right here. Equal lows. And right, now let's go in the lower time frame. Let's go like a four hour. Okay, ooh, yeah. Four hour took out these equal highs hard. And notice how it's wicking hard off this four hour fair value gap. So I'm gonna mark this fair value gap out. So bearish for value is getting super respected and bullish ones is getting disrespected. So it's kind of giving me a bearish bias. So now let's go to one hour. Let's see what's going on in one hour. Oh shit, I can kind of get away. Fuck. Okay. What time is this? So, okay. So boom. 9 a.m. Okay, let's go to 30 minutes. So what do you want to see for it? We want to wait for a, damn it. Pre-market higher low to get taken. I'm just going to lower time frame. So 15 minute. Let's see. Okay, good. So I'm marking out this fair value gaps get that are getting respected and disrespected right now, guys. So that's what I'm waiting for. So we took out equal highs. We wicked off this four-hour fair value gap right now. So now what I want to wait for is possible a reversal. So let's go to lower time frame. This market opened like this. Yeah, so market took out this pre-market high. Now what you wait for is a big displacement to the downside. Okay, so let's check it out, guys. Let's wait for a displacement to the downside. Wait for a big candle to the downside, guys. Forget one. Let's see. Okay, hold on. Let's see if you get a manipulation move or not. Okay, hold on. Oh, there you go. Nice. We took out this low. Sorry, we took out this high. Now, we were coming down to the downside. People were like, you know what? I'm going to enter short. I'm going to enter short. Guess what? They just got stopped out. Manipulation move. Perfect. So now, let's wait for displacement. We should see bigger candles now. Okay, there you go. Now, we're getting some bigger candles after the manipulation. Cool. So, let's wait. Let's see if we're value gap. Okay. 
I like this fear of LA gap. Why? Because we broke structure to the downside with this candle. Well, not break structure. We had to change the structure. Because look, right. Let me just mark this out. So we had a higher low, higher high, higher low, high, um, higher high, higher low, higher high. Now we broke to the downside. Okay. Now we broke this low. Perfect with displacement. Not this low, my bad. This low with displacement. Okay. Cool. So now what I want to wait for? I want to wait for a fear value gap entry, and I want to target the lows. Let's see. So, boom. Stop loss above this high. And TP1 could be like here. TP2 can be down here. Whatever. Let's see if we get tapped into. All right. Boom. Tapped into fair value gap. Let's enter full port. Just kidding. Don't full port, guys. All right. So, we tapped into fair value gap. Let's see how the trade plays out, guys. So, let's see. And. So, TP1 got hit. So, TP1 got hit. Usually, after TP1, a lot of people have their stop loss to break even. But let's see. How this continues to the downside. Yeah, and let's see. Look at price. See how it's dumping to the downside? Perfectly. So, like that. That's what you guys want to look for, guys. When you look for it, when you're coming to open day, mark out high time frame liquidity or London session or pre-market liquidity. Wait for them to get taken. Wait for a displacement, a manipulation, and then enter on the fair value gap. That's usually what you want to try to look for. Connor, do you have any other questions? No, sir. No, sir. So, basically, Connor, I want I want you right now. I'm gonna give you a challenge. I'm gonna give you a blank one, and I want you to try to tell me what you're thinking. And I'm just gonna what's it called? I'm just trying to find a good example. I want to find a blank sheet, a sheet, and I want you to tell me what I should do. So pretend like you're like on my computer. Uh, lift. Okay, because these are just random ass stocks. I'm just trying to find a good example. Pinterest. Mm. Ooh, nice. Okay, yeah. fire. I like this one. Uh, let me go back. All right, let's check. So, Connor, completely empty one. Completely empty. What should you do? Uh, can you zoom in a bit? This is a one minute time frame, by the way. Uh, I mean, I would go to like the daily. Okay, daily, okay. See what we're looking like. All right, so we, we pushed high. We pushed high. Is that all-time highs? Interest? Yeah. No. no. Oh, God. Oh, this is my old markings. My bad. Let me just look at this shit. It's like super old. Delete. You don't have to do that. You can delete them all. It's whatever. It's fine. Okay, so, yeah. So, we're not all-time highs. So, so we, we came... In a downtrend, created the liquidity. Now we're like kind of went into an uptrend, and now we're going back down. Mm -hmm. More liquidity. Mhm. Mm it's just going sideways, really, really nothing. Sideways, okay. So what else would you? So what would you do next? Uh, well, I'd mark out lows. Okay, so which low would you mark out? Uh, zoom out a bit. Well, we, we got a fat fair value gap down there. This one right here. That's a gap. That's a gap. Yeah. So this is it's, it's called um, volume imbalance. Volume imbalance right here. That's what it's called. We could mark out that move up the white one. Maybe. Go down to 32 level. 32 right yeah, here? Right there. Yeah. yeah this one right here. Like yeah, like this is a big spot, like a big fair value gap. Because it, it's going to really tell us what, if the stock's going to go up, if it's going to go down. Okay. Um, yeah. Then, honestly, I would, this could be a long setup, like see how it plays out. Okay. And, long, and then it could possibly go up. Like you could swing trade it. Possibly. So, after you mark out your stuff in a daily, what, do you, what would you do now? Uh, like look at the 15, probably. Yeah, so you look at the lower time frame. Let's start with the four. Four hour. Any fair value gaps? Anything crucial mark to mark out? Any lows? I'm going on my computer. What, what time frame are you in? Four hours? Four hour on Pinterest, yeah. Right. Oh my, it had a huge wick on February 9th. Or 8th. You see that? Yeah, I see the huge wick. Huge wick. Really? really just going sideways like this stock is uh 
really got nothing going right now, but it is creating liquidity. Yeah. So it's probably going to have a, a big move soon. So what about, what about these stacked lows right down here that we have? Stacked lows. Would you mark one of them out? Because this is still four hours. Four hours is huge time frame. What, the lows that just created? Yeah, lows that we just created. So what would you do here? Would you mark anything here? I mean, you could, but like, no, I, I don't really like It's too recent, you know what I mean? Too recent. Okay, not bad. And then probably mark at the high. And then, like you said, let's go Let's go to a lower time frame. Okay, this is the one hour. Uh, this is, uh, what the fuck? Wait, today's what? Tuesday? Oh, uh, no, today's, I wonder why is it? Hold on a sec. 18 why is it fuck so now we're in this daily range okay we're, we marked out this daily range cool now just going to lower time frame and let's just see what happens now so okay we'll mark it just open okay nice mark it open now what are we waiting for connor in this range what are we waiting for um in the one minute yeah, right now I'm in the one minute. So we marked out the what? If we're trading, well, we would see if it take out that low and then push higher. Okay, nice. So we took out this pre-market low just now. So let's see if we keep going down to get displacement. Usually I chill in the five minute though for like, see if it take out the five minute lows or highs. Okay. That's how like Morgan does it. Okay, boom. Fat came to the upside. Okay. Let's go to one minute. So that's a fat candle. Let's see if we can get a retrace back down right here. Let's check. You know what? Let's just say screw it and let's do a three minute. Let's. Yeah, it, took, it took out the March 15th low. Yeah. Pushed up to the upside. So pushed up to the upside hard. We broke structure. See that right here? We broke structure with this high. We have a three minute for value gap. Let's see if we get tapped into where it runs away. Let's see if it runs away or get tapped into this Fair Valley Gap. Let's just check this out. Let's see if his patience being worth. Okay, boom. Tapped in this Fair Valley Gap, okay? So we would buy here. Uh, let's say, like, you can put your stop wherever you want at the low Fair Valley Gap. But just for example, let's have a big stop. Take profit would be, take profit one would be this pre market high. And take profit two would be this daily high. So let's see if this trade plays out or not. Let's drag this out. Let's see if any of the TPs get hit or get stopped. Let's do this. And I think, oh, this is where it is right now. Okay, so we used to be in this trade. So right now we're in drawdown. But um, sometimes the trade doesn't, obviously the strategy is not 100% win rate because anything could happen in the market. But basically, you just follow the same rules. So basically, what you guys want to look for when you look for a strategy, look in the higher time frame, look for a daily bias, okay? Look at which what's the trend direction going. Then look at then mark at the daily highs and lows, which fair value gap is respecting, which fair value gap is disrespecting, okay? Then you just keep going in lower time frame, mark all that same stuff out, and then basically, you just mark at the pre-market highs and pre-market lows. You wait for one of them to get taken, and then you want to go the opposite direction. So that's the what you that's basically how to create your own strategy. That's just a simple guideline of what you should be looking for when you're trading, guys. So if you have any comments down below in the YouTube, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you post next. Thank you guys. Peace.